love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, what's poppin' my homies? Islam Makashev taking on Bobby Green as the main event on this fight night. Originally supposed to be Benil Darush and that main event, you know, it meant something in the 155 division. But man, you've got to give mad respect to King Bobby Green, you know, stepping up to fight Islam. Now, another fighter that I have to give massive respect to. Before I get into this full card breakdown and predictions video, there's one fighter I've got to speak about. You know, every week we turn up, we make predictions. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. Every week we're making bets. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. But if you say a fighter is getting smoked, right? And I did say this. I said, Jim Miller, you're getting smoked. Jim Miller did not get smoked. So yeah, Jim Miller, man, massive respect. You broke my bet, you broke my night, but yeah, credit to Jim Miller, man. Credit to ya. I'll spark up for the OG too, you know what I'm saying? As always, my homies, make sure you hams that smash that like button. All right, let's break them down. All right, guys, we've got a matchup between Victor Altamirano taking on Carlos Hernandez. Now, this is a pretty good matchup and a difficult prediction to make. Now, the reasons why it's a difficult prediction, if you go back and watch Victor Altamirano on the Contender Series, he did get very tired. And one of the main reasons why he got tired, the takedown defense isn't great. Now, there is also times in that fight where... His hands are quite low, so he looks quite hittable, especially when he's tired. Now, despite those weaknesses in that contender series fight, the guy did throw down. You know, he's still throwing his techniques. He's a gritty fighter. Now, on the flip side, you've got Carlos Hernandez, who also had like a pretty good fight on the contender series. Guys, I'm going to show you a clip. And if I told you that Carlos Hernandez lost to this fighter, would you believe me? You know, he did lose this fight. Was this fight his pro debut? Yes, it was. Does Carlos Hernandez look much better now than what he did in that fight? Yes, he does. Was that four foot ten fighter a good Greco-Roman wrestler? Yes, he was. Guys, like I said, Carlos Hernandez has improved massively since that loss in his pro debut. And that's ultimately why this one's a difficult fight to predict. If I had to choose who had the cardio edge, I would side with Carlos Hernandez. If I had to choose who had the wrestling advantage, I would side with Carlos Hernandez. I would say that Victor Altamirano has the better striking, but that's not to say that Carlos Hernandez isn't going to fire the one-twos on the back foot. You know, the way I see this matchup playing out, Carlos Hernandez is going to circle on the outside, fire the one-twos, then look to level change. Victor Altamirano is going to look to kick the opponent, try to use his techniques from a distance. You you know, this is a difficult prediction to make. Originally, I was leaning towards Carlos Hernandez. But man, I'm going to side with Victor Altamirano to maybe win this fight with the striking. If Carlos Hernandez can take Victor to the mat, look to utilize his wrestling, maybe make it a cardio type fight, then maybe he wins. You know, it's a, it's a difficult one. But I'm going to side with Victor Altamirano, not by a lot. And I'm probably not going to bet this one. Now, the bookies have it lined minus 120 for Carlos Hernandez plus 100 for Victor Altamirano and that's a pretty accurate line you know how do you make an accurate confident prediction on this fight it's a 50-50 matchup all right we've got a matchup between Ramiz Brahimaj taking on Michael Gilmore ultimately what you've got in this matchup guys is two wrestlers you know two grapplers if we take a look at Ramiz Brahimaj in his last matchup I took a shot you know I took a shot on Ramiz at plus money and it was a shot that I should not have taken because Court McGee dusted him. And even on the feet too, you know, there was moments on the feet where Court McGee nearly won the fight through striking. And that's maybe because if you look at the grappling exchanges between Ramiz and Court McGee, you know, these were fatiguing exchanges, grappling heavy exchanges where when the grappling exchanges stop and you get back to the striking, you really see how much it took out of both guys. But to be honest, man, it didn't take too much out of Court McGee. He's been doing it for a long time. It took a lot out of Ramiz Brahimaj. Now, what I'm going to ask myself with this one, can Michael Gilmore out-hustle Ramiz Brahimaj? You know, can he fatigue him the same way with the grappling? I'm going to say probably not. However, if you look at Michael Gilmore against Petrovsky, you know, there's moments in that fight where Michael Gilmore is literally swinging from the hip. You know, he's putting kill shots out there. You know, if one of those shots get through against a fatigued Ramiz Brahimaj, you know, he might sleep him on the feet. 
But yeah guys, if you put a gun to my head and said how does this one go down, I would say there's a little bit of kickboxing for the first minute or so. And then Ramiz Brahimaj is gonna basically level change at the right time, take the fight to the mat. And at that point he basically has to show us what he showed us against Sasha Palatnikov. Which is basically jujitsu. You know, he's going to look to submit Michael Gilmore if he gets that takedown. I'm going to say he probably gets the takedown. You know, this isn't Court McGee. This is Michael Gilmore. And if you're Michael Gilmore, you know, you're saying to yourself, look, Court McGee was tagging this guy on the feet. I'm going to look to knock this guy dead. But yeah, my prediction on this one, guys, I'm going to side with Ramiz Brahimaj, hoping this one's a better performance. And I'd have to price him around minus 200. Now the bookies have Ramiz priced minus 350. Oh my goodness. When you get to those minus 300s, minus 400s, you know, I think it has to be like a Peter Yan, a Shavkat. Even though Ramiz Brahimaj is going to be favoured by the masses to beat Michael Gilmore. At minus 350, you know, I'm not about it. It's no bueno. Alright guys, moving into a matchup between Alejandro Perez taking on Jonathan Martinez. Man, this is a pretty good matchup. So we're going to start with showing clips of Alejandro Perez being sent to Shadow City. And now we're going to show a clip of Jonathan Martinez getting sent to Shadow City. So both of these fighters have experienced the Shadow City experience. You know, when you step inside the cage, the Shadow City experience is nearly guaranteed. You know what I'm saying? At some point in your career, you're going to experience being separated from reality. You know, your consciousness is going to be shut off at some point. Now, when I'm looking at the styles of both of these fighters, what they like to do is strike. You know, it's not really considered a old school style versus a new school style, but I kind of feel like this matchup is that because when you look at Alejandro Perez you know he's kind of like an old school guy pretty tough gonna look to walk you down you know you look at him against uh, Johnny Eduardo with that shoulder roll and the head movement you know he's like an old school guy that's kind of what I feel when I watch Alejandro Perez fight now on the flip side I see like the new school in Jonathan Martinez you know this guy's not really looking to knock you dead the same way Alejandro Perez is looking to do that but this guy does have a swagger to him you know what I'm saying you know he's moving like water yeah he's trying to be fluid with his movement I think Alejandro Perez is going to try to find the kill shot multiple times and Jonathan Martinez is basically going to avoid that and look Look to be quicker, look to be trickier. You know, send a lot of kicks to the opponent. Alejandro Perez probably wants this fight in the pocket. You know, he wants a dogfight. Whereas Jonathan Martinez wants to keep it more technical, wants to show more of his skill. And when you're trying to show your skill, you know, you're trying to keep it a little bit clean, almost like a Garne. So yeah, that's the matchup we've got here. I'm going to side with Jonathan Martinez. It's always going to come down to who can impose what they've got to do. I just think Jonathan Martinez maybe has an easier matchup. One of the main reasons why I think it's uh, a better matchup for Jonathan Martinez. If you look at Alejandro Perez, like I said, against Johnny Eduardo with like the shoulder roll, you can see what's coming. You know, you've got to almost be unpredictable in forcing that dogfight with Jonathan Martinez. So unless Alejandro Perez mixes it up a little bit, looks to be more unorthodox, almost like a Davy Grant. You know, Davy Grant's throwing multiple different techniques. He's looking to mix it up. Whereas Alejandro Perez, I'm not too sure he's going to be unorthodox. And that's why I think Jonathan Martinez maybe picks him apart a little bit in this matchup. Maybe a little bit harsh on the betting line, but I'm going to price Jonathan Martinez around minus 250. And the bookies have minus 200 up to minus 220 on Jonathan Martinez. So yeah, you do have to lay like two to one if you want to bet Jonathan, but I think it's a good matchup. Oh man, we've got a matchup between Jin Yu Fry taking on Hannah Goldie. There's no way I'm going to speak about this fight without sparking up. There's no way. You know, you've got to you've got to try and get a little bit baked to speak about this one. You know, this is wow. No, please, not now. Not now, G. Not with this matchup. All right, man. So Hannah Goldie, let's take a look at her UFC career. In her UFC debut against Miranda Granger, she just circled on the outside, got beat up. Against Diana Balbita, she got beat up. 
against Emily Whitmire in her last fight. She was losing that fight until she pulled off the armbar. Now guys, Emily Whitmire does have a history of losing fights via armbar. Now looking at the opponent, Jin Yufri, her UFC debut against Kay Hansen. You know, she did win round one to her credit, but went on to lose the fight. Then she got given Loma Look Boon Me, which, you know, she was never going to win this matchup. Even when she entered the clinch against Loma, you know, you're thinking maybe she can use a little bit of grappling to get the fight to the mat. But Loma Look Boon Me was like, you come to this clinch, I'm going to dust you with knees. I'm going to hurt you real bad. And that's what she done to Jin Yu Fry, you know, she started to dust her. Now looking at Jin Yu Fry against Gloria De Paula, you know, she utilized a bit of wrestling, looked pretty good. Her most recent fight was against Ashley Yoda. Now, Ashley Yoda isn't like a good fighter, but she is quite long. You know, this one's really a 50-50 matchup again. Who do you pick? Do you pick Hannah Goldie? She's pretty jacked. You know, on the flip side, Jin Yu Frey is pretty jacked too. Both of these girls, you know, not missing the, uh, the weightlifting days. You know what I'm saying? Getting their protein in post-workout. And they're not missing the window too. You know, you've got that window that anabolic window, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my prediction on this one, guys, I'm going to side with Jin Yu Fry. I think she's shown a little bit more than Hannah Goldie. I don't feel super great about predicting Jin to win the fight, but when you have Hannah Goldie, you know what I'm saying? You've got to win this one. You can't be losing to Hannah. I'm going to side with Jin Yu Fry. I'm with the bookie. There's no way I bet it, though. Alright guys, moving into a matchup between Terence McKinney taking on Faraz Ziam. Now I've already spoke about this matchup, already given my prediction on this matchup. However, there's an Uno reversal guys. I'm going to be changing my prediction on this fight. Originally I was thinking Faraz Ziam is the prediction. But I'm using that Uno reversal card. I'm on Terence McKinney in this matchup. I'm not super confident. You know, anytime you swap your prediction, you really shouldn't be confident. But one of the main reasons why I think I'm going to change here, Farah Siam may be the more technical fighter, but isn't really good at keeping range. And you look at what Terence McKinney done to Matt Frivola, you know, that one, two, straight down the barrel. Complete dusteration, you know, Shadow City real quick. It's like Drake said, you know, zero to 100 real quick. But Terence McKinney's like, you know, zero to Shadow City real quick. That's how we're going to do it. So yeah, guys, I am going to change my prediction on this fight. I'm not super confident, but outside of round one, I think Terence McKinney can maybe, you know, force a little bit of grappling or even just keep the fight in the pocket, you know, which isn't going to favor for our Siam. You know, Siam looks pretty good when he can use the kicks, use the technique from a distance but once you take away the distance you know i don't really see the same fighter so yeah uno reversal changing my prediction i'm taking terence mckinney i would still keep the odds pretty close you know both of these guys minus 110 the smaller octagon may favor terence mckinney if both of these fighters start to slow down you know it becomes more of a dog fight so yeah the bookies have terence mckinney plus 100 plus 110 potentially a good underdog on this card all right guys what we got here we've got Josian Nunes taking on Ramona Pascal. So if you type in Ramona Pascal into YouTube, you see a TED talk. You see a TED talk, man, and yes, that's kind of funny. I feel like the cage door is just closed. I also believe Ramona's going to be the first female fighter from Hong Kong in the UFC. So she is making history, so you can, you know, you can bank on that TED talk V2, you know, that's coming. But yeah, man, Ramona Pascal, she's a big girl. It looks like she's a Muay Thai fighter, you know, kicks to the body, knees to the body, all of that kind of stuff, you know, Muay Thai. Now, there is a possibility that if she takes Josian Nunes to the mat, who is a smaller fighter, if she can take her to the mat, you know, just look to flatten her out. That is a path to victory. Now, on the flip side, when you look at Josian Nunes, she's not doing TED Talks. Yeah, she's doing all the talking with her hands, you know what I'm trying to say? Bia Maleki knows what I'm trying to say. You know, this Josie Ann Nunes girl, little pit bull, you know, firing missiles at your head. I'm going to side with Josie Ann Nunes. I think Josie Ann Nunes is a good puncher, you know. The way she set down Maleki was, it was nasty. Guys, one thing to note with this matchup, it is at 145. And that's why I mentioned that if Ramona Pascal can take Josie Ann to the mat and flatten her out, that's a decent path to victory. But yeah, my prediction, I'm going to side with Nunes. She's launching missiles at your head, you know what I'm saying? I like it. Alright guys, moving into a matchup between Ignacio Bahamondes taking on Zhu Rong. Man, this matchup is fireworks to be honest. Both of these guys are killer strikers. 
you know, you look at what Ignacio Bahamondes done to Roosevelt Roberts, you know, complete dusteration. Zhu Rong is like 21 years old. You know, this guy is the youngest fighter on the UFC roster, if I'm not mistaken. You know, the UFC debut of Ignacio wasn't too good, and the UFC debut of Zhu Rong also wasn't too good. Ignacio kind of showed us that his striking defense needs a little bit of work. You know, Macdessi was popping him with one-twos, and even though Roosevelt Roberts got obliterated, you know, he was finding a home for the jab at times in that fight. Now, Zhu Rong with the UFC debut, a little bit inactive. Joe Rogan kind of described it. He was reacting more than acting. So that basically means he was looking to counter the opponent, waiting for the opponent to make a mistake. But sometimes the opponent's not going to make a mistake and you end up wasting a round just watching the opponent. And that's kind of what happened to Zhu Rong. Now, when he does let his hands go, you know, Zhu Rong can strike. Both of these guys are killer strikers. Man, it's a really good matchup, you know. Both of these guys are prospects. I'm slightly leaning towards Ignacio Bahamondes. You know, maybe it's the output that I'm liking on Ignacio Bahamondes. His striking defense isn't the greatest, like I said. You know, he can be hit with the jab. You can kind of bust up the face of Ignacio, but he's going to keep moving forward. You know, he's going to hit you with kicks. And his boxing at times looked kind of sharp against Roosevelt Roberts. And then you see the way he ended the fight, like I showed you with that spinning attack up high. So yeah, both of these guys can strike. It's a difficult prediction, but I'm going to side with Ignacio Bahamondes. And the bookies have Ignacio Bahamondes minus 250. You know, I'm not sure about that. Ignacio Bahamondes can strike, but so can Zhu Rong. You know, the betting line potentially a little bit off on this one. All right, my homies, you know what time it is, man. Let's go. If you waited to smoke with me, amen. If you've been smoking this whole time, double amen. If you're not a smoker, but you enjoy the smoke breaks, that's a triple amen, gang. Let's go. Hey, I hope you guys are doing well, doing blessed, having a good day, having a good week. Hey, shout out to all of the people in the chat right now. This is probably premiering. I say this every week, but shout out to you guys. All right, I've got two questions. The first question, who is your favorite underdog on this card? And the second question is going to be, if you had to pick your favorite stone a movie of all time favorite stoner movie of all time a hey, go to the comment section drop it down let's see i guarantee you one of the most used answers is gonna be cheech and chong it looks like a toothpick man and that's probably because it arguably is the greatest of all time but if you had to pick one that wasn't cheech and chong i mean you can pick that if you want Guys, for me, I'm going to go with Harold and Kumar. You know, that battle to White Castle, you know. Amen to that. You know what I'm saying? You get real baked and traveling from A to B. It's like a, like a whole mission. As always, my homies, if you want all of my bets on this UFC card, which I didn't have a good one last time, hashtag Jim Miller. But yeah, if you want all of my bets on this card, join the Patreon, join the Discord. Link is down below. All right, guys, let's break down this main card. Let's go. All right, guys, we've got our man Patrizian taking on Gregory Rodriguez. Man, this is a good matchup. So looking at Gregory Rodriguez first, in his UFC debut, man, the boxing was so evident. Maybe a little bit to do with Dusko Todorovic. The head movement isn't great, but still, you know, Gregory Rodriguez looking good in that UFC debut. Then you look at his most recent fight against John Young Park. Now, to be completely honest, guys, Gregory Rodriguez got quite tired in this fight. But yeah, this sport's pretty crazy. Somehow, Gregory Rodriguez still finds a way to win this matchup. And I'm glad he did too, because I had a little bet on him at plus money and it was looking, it was looking bad at one point, but yeah, found a way. All right, so the opponent, Arman Patrizian, this guy fought on the Contender Series and he completely dusted his opponent. That Muay Thai striking of Arman Patrizian, you know, this guy can send you to Shadow City. Now, guys, if we're looking at the problems Gregory may cause Arman compared to the problems Arman may cause Gregory, for Arman Patrizian, you know, it's going to be, can I stop the takedown? Because you've got a Muay Thai striker in Arman Patrizian who's going to look to use that striking. If you look at Gregory Rodriguez against Jan Yong Park, you know, the takedown entry was pretty good. Not only was the takedown entry pretty good, but he was able to keep Jan Yong Park on the mat. You know, the way he flowed from position to position 
on the mat, it, it was good, man. So, yeah, the ground game of Gregory Rodriguez might be an issue. Now, on the flip side, if Gregory Rodriguez slows down the way he did against Jun Yong Park, I don't think he's going to find a, a Hail Mary KO. I can't see it happening again. And that's like the big issue for Gregory Rodriguez, you know. If he goes hard for that finish round one and slows down, Armand Patrizian on his UFC debut from the contender might get a KO. So yeah, ultimately guys, this one's a really good matchup. I'm going to side with Armand Patrizian simply because if he doesn't get submitted round one, doesn't get KO'd round one, there's a good chance Gregory slows down. And if you slow down against this guy, you know what I'm saying? It's Shadow City. So yeah, I'd keep the betting odds pretty close. I'd put Arman a slight, slight favourite. And you've got Arman Patrician plus 130 up to plus 160. So yeah, that is an underdog that I like on this main card. All right, guys, looking at the matchup we've got here between Arman Sarukian taking on Joel Alvarez. Man, I cashed Joel Alvarez as like a nice plus 200 underdog against Thiago Moises. And this guy is like a welterweight at lightweight. You know what I'm saying? Low key. Actually, not even low key. I think everyone acknowledges that, you know, this guy misses weight and he just looks like a big, big dude at lightweight. You know, he's not a lightweight. This guy is a welterweight. But yeah, you look at the performance against Thiago Moises dusted him now the problem with this matchup Armand Sarukian is like a high level prospect anyone that goes through that Tiger Muay Thai training program you're basically a prospect in combat Brad Riddell, Fazeev, Peter Yan, Arman Sarukian. I could keep going on. There's so many fighters that have trained at Tiger Muay Thai that just have a sick level of Muay Thai, you know what I'm saying? And then you look at the other areas that Arman Sarukian excels in. The wrestling. You know, this guy can wrestle. The cardio's good. The striking's good. The wrestling's good. This guy's an all-round mixed martial artist. You know, you see that in his UFC debut against Islam Makashev. So picturing how this one plays out, you've got Joel Alvarez who, is a jiu-jitsu player but looks to use his striking until it goes to the mat once you've got Joel Alvarez to the mat he's looking for guillotines on the way down if there's no guillotine on the way down it can be an arm bar it can be a triangle you know he's got really good jiu-jitsu now the striking is going to be interesting too because like I said you've got a welterweight fighting at lightweight Joel Alvarez has a big height and reach advantage but man even with the size advantage Armin Sarukian's going to look to land those kicks he's going to get on the inside he's going to try to show Joel Alvarez look, I don't care about your size advantage. I'm going to dismantle you. You know, he's going to look to use that Muay Thai. He might even look to take down Joel Alvarez, you know, show him, look, I know your jiu-jitsu is pretty good, but not today. You know, both of these guys are prospects and they're fighting each other. You know, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. My prediction, guys, I'm going to side with Arman Sarukian. It's a really good matchup, but if I had to pick who I'm liking more as a prospect, it's Arman Sarukian. I'm going to give Joel Alvarez a little bit of respect though. I'll put Arman around minus 200. And the bookies have Arman minus 300. So yeah, the bookies are higher on Arman than I am in this matchup, but I'm still making the same prediction. All right, guys, you've got a matchup between the zombie girl taking on Ji Young Kim. Now, this one's a decent matchup because as we know, the zombie girl literally fights like a zombie. I don't know how many of you guys watch The Walking Dead or have watched The Walking Dead, but you know, the zombie will keep walking forward until you shoot it in the head. Girl! Do you know why there's no gambling in Africa? There are too many cheetahs. Too many cheetahs, Coral. You know, you can shoot it in the body, shoot it in the legs, but it's not going to go away. Now, even when you get the headshot against the zombie girl, you know, she's still coming forward. You know, she's a zombie. Now, the way to beat the zombie girl is literally just beat her up for 15 minutes. Or if you're a grappler, you're going to take the fight to the mat. Now, if we're looking at Ji Yeon Kim, you know, this girl is a pretty good boxer. You can go back and watch her fight against Alexa Grasso. I'm pretty sure she won the first round. When you're picturing Alexa Grasso losing round one, you're probably thinking it's wrestling. But not for Ji Yeon Kim, you know, this girl looked to use her boxing in that fight. and She done pretty well in the first round. Now, when you've got a pretty good boxer and you've got a fighter who has terrible striking defense and pretty much prides herself on the fact that she does have bad defense you know she's named herself the zombie girl you know that's like saying look i know i'm bad but 
I'm like a zombie. It's pretty cool. When you've got a really good boxer against that style, I can only see the boxer just teeing off on her. You know what I'm saying? So as much as I want to pick zombie girl because I think she's got a fun style, I'm not going to pick her because I can just see her face getting busted up by Kim. So that's going to be my prediction. I'm going to take Ji Young Kim to just basically box the zombie girl's face as if it was a punch bag. You know, a walking punch bag is what zombie girl is. And I think that's going to be the story of the fight so yeah that's going to be my prediction on this one you know it is kind of fatiguing just beating up a punch bag like the punch bag won't go away it's kind of fatiguing but but yeah i just see like a dominant performance for g young kim and i'd have to price g young kim at least a minus 200 and the bookies have this fight minus 170 up to minus 250 so yeah if you can get like minus 170 on g young kim that price ain't too bad considering she's gonna box the face you know what i'm saying minus 170 is not too bad all right, guys, co-main event, you've got Misha Serkinov taking on Wellington Terman. Yeah, this one's quite a difficult prediction to make. When you look at Misha Serkinov, he's been dusted quite a few times, usually competing at 205, but he has dropped down some middleweight. He lost his middleweight debut against Christoph Jocko, and I just went back and watched that fight. Yeah, kind of lackluster from Misha Serkinov, you know, a lot of watching didn't really let his hands go too much and even when he initiated the grappling exchanges like took the fight to the mat or pushed shot go against the fence even when he done that you know he didn't look as strong as he normally would you know 34 35 years old and now you're cutting extra weight to make middleweight you know he wasn't obliterated by Christoph Jocko it was a split decision you know kind of close but guys if you go back and just literally watch Misha Serkinov in this fight if you just keep your eyes on Misha Serkinov the performance you know it's not that impressive he's almost fighting from like a defensive mindset almost like a Sam Alvey and that's because Misha Serkinov has the uh, dusty chin you know what I'm saying even he knows the chin's dust if you're looking at Wellington from a striking standpoint his kicks are pretty good you know the teeps to the body the low kicks the high kicks his kicking game is quite violent now guys I wouldn't normally say that Wellington Terman is like a good striker I wouldn't say he's a good boxer but if you go back and watch the fight against Sam Alvey if you watch the last minute of round free you know the urgency Wellington Terman shows in the last minute against Sam Alvey really trying to knock him out you know who's gonna bite down on the mouthpiece and go for that KO if this matchup's close I kind of favor Wellington Terman to be that guy so yeah that's the prediction I'm gonna make you know it's not a bad matchup for either guy Misha isn't a great striker Wellington isn't a great striker they're both grapplers so you're probably gonna get some clinching against the fence and even in that type of fight you know who's gonna be the guy to control those positions there was moments where Jocko was like reversing the position against the fence and I think if Jocko's gonna reverse those positions positions Wellington Terman is pretty strong when he gets those double unders you know what I'm saying so yeah guys my prediction on this matchup I'm gonna take Wellington Terman I'd keep the odds pretty close like put him a minus 130 and you've got the complete opposite you've got Wellington Terman plus 100 Misha minus 120 so the bookies are slightly favoring Misha I'm slightly favoring Wellington it's a good matchup though all right my homies main event if you've enjoyed the breakdown be sure to hams that smash the like button send the subscribe button to Shadow City I said it at the start of the breakdown I'm gonna say it again mad mad respect for Bobby Green not a lot of people want to fight Islam Makashev, but Bobby Green is a gangster, so yeah, mad respect. Recently, we have spoke about Bobby Green. We know what he's looking to do. You know, he's a boxer. You look at his performance against Nazrat just a few days ago. Everything Bobby Green done in that fight is what he's going to look to do in this fight. He's going to look to box with Islam Makashev. That's how he wins this matchup. Now on the flip side, Islam Makashev, we've spoken about this guy a few times on the channel. And every time I speak about this guy, I pretty much say the same thing. It's basically Habib 2.0. Everything Islam Makashev is looking to do is what Habib has basically done. And I might get that comment, you know, Islam Makashev is not as good as Habib. But he's looking to do the same thing. His striking is arguably better, but he's not really looking to strike for too long. He will strike a little bit but as soon as he can get the grappling going that's what he's looking to do now guys if you go back and look at his fights against drew doba tiago moises and dan hooker against drew doba you know he got that finish from half guard anytime you get a head and arm choke from half guard you're basically showing people look i can finish it from here i don't even need to get into side control i don't need to get off to the side to finish this choke 
you've got to have a super strong squeeze to finish from half guard. And Islam Makashev showed that. Now, if you look at the submission again, Thiago Moises. Moises had never been submitted. You know, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Moises literally makes one minor adjustment to work back to his feet. As he makes that one minor adjustment, Islam Makashev just slides his forearm right underneath the chin. And that's it. You know, pretty much the same thing against Dan Hooker. Islam Makashev was setting up a Kimura. Dan Hooker was trying to sit up, but as Dan Hooker sat up, which is a minor adjustment, right? As Dan Hooker sits up, Islam Makashev takes advantage of that minor adjustment, which is stepping over with the leg. And this is why I'm saying that Islam Makashev is basically Habib 2.0. Even if you do the right thing on the mat, even if you're making minor adjustments to work back to your feet, Islam Makashev is literally taking advantage of those adjustments. And he's finding finishes from those adjustments, you know. He's a really high level grappler. And that's what I have to side with here. I'm going to side with Islam Makashev to take down Bobby Green. The question we're going to ask ourselves, is Bobby Green going to make it 25 minutes? Now, based on what I'm seeing against Drew Doe, Thiago Moises and Dan Hooker based on what I'm seeing there I'm gonna say no I kind of think it's gonna be the same thing you know Bobby Green's making minor adjustments to get back to his feet Islam Makashev is just a step ahead taking advantage of the opponent you know that's his world the grappling is Islam's game and there's no one who's gonna grapple with him Bobby Green has really good wrestling but is it on the level of Islam Makashev absolutely not so yeah, I'm going to take Islam Makashev. I think he's going to be a future champion at 155. And to be honest with you guys, even if this was Benil Darush, I'd be doing the same breakdown. So yeah, that's going to be my prediction. I'm going to take Islam Makashev inside the distance. And I'm sure the betting line, yeah. The bookies have Islam Makashev minus 700. Oh my goodness. So yeah, Bobby Green literally has no chance according to the bookies. And I kind of agree with it. If Bobby Green can go like 25 minutes and lose the fight, not get finished that's kind of like a win but yeah my prediction guys i'm team russia i'm team islam makashev i'm looking forward to this one though bobby green's a gangster you know what i'm saying as always my homies drop down your underdogs your main event prediction your co-main your parlays all of that good stuff drop it in the comment section below keep your eyes to the sky never glued to your shoes mac miller all right peace